birds are expensive. <laughs> Hey, I'm Nadja and this is my husband Justin and the last time you guys saw us we were graduating our blue and gold ocean in Utah. So since graduating ocean we've had a lot of life changes. I finished nursing school and got my career started and then we built a house so that sucked everything out of us. And then we adopted another bird, Diesel. So Diesel is six years old. He is a Catalina macaw. We actually got him because of a pretty sad scenario that we had gone through. We were originally going to adopt a free-flighted bird that had gone through the Bird Tricks program and things kind of fell through for that. And one of our friends that owns a local rescue had contacted us and said, Hey, I have this bird. I know you guys aren't really looking for an older bird, but I really think it might be a good fit. And we were really on the fence about it and we sat, we talked, we figured out like is this what we really want to do etc cetera, etc cetera. we went and we met him we had seen a couple videos of him kind of being inside and flying indoors but he'd never been formally free flight trained outside or let alone inside it was just kind of like come to the perch type of deal it took about two and a half weeks for justin to get him to want to be um handled in the sense of like stepping up training and whatnot i don't know Training Diesel versus training Ocean was completely different. When we got Ocean up, she was a baby. So we learned to train Ocean as a baby, essentially. And so one thing that we had learned with bird tricks is that baby birds are a lot more forgiving than older birds. So there was that like, kind of the like intimidation factor of Diesel's an older bird. We really can't screw it up or he's going to really, really hate us. There was a lot more planning and communication that Jess and I had to do to kind of make sure we were on the same page in the sense of not messing up certain things with him so then that way he would be receptive to the both of us. Whereas Ocean is just melts in our hands. Diesel was a little bit different. Diesel was previously clipped. He was taught on a leash, but as far as free flight, he had never done anything like that. So it's kind of cool to see his adventure. Yeah, our friend that we got him through the rescue, she had mentioned that he was clipped, but he had shown that he still wanted to fly. And so his previous owners were flying him, even though he was clipped and he was really receptive to that. And that's kind of like, she was like, he would be a really great free flyer. So that kind of like was her reason for point. yeah her, her selling, selling point, point essentially for us because we were on the fence of getting an older bird we were like no we're just gonna go to a breeder thank you so one of the cool things that was um part of like our adoption process with diesel was it wasn't like a you you know you adopt them and then you deal with it it was a 60 to 90 day trial to kind of give us time to see how would he do with ocean how would he do with the family how would he be as far as his receptiveness to us so it was nice because we we're like well if it doesn't work out then we at least gave the rescue you know 90 days of you know him being with handled by somebody else and kind of help them out or whatnot but i think we knew by like by like the 30th day that justin was like do we really have to go through the trial and i was like yes we do <laughs> He's like, well, when the trial is over, he's ours. I think we kind of knew we did. within yeah. that month that he was going to work really, really well with us. But that was what was really nice. Was It wasn't like a forced, 
take the bird and now you're on your own. Um, and the rescue owner would like check in with us like, Hey, how's diesel doing? How are you guys doing? Do you have any questions? Do you have any concerns? Um, and it was nice because we were able to kind of communicate and say, Hey, I've noticed he does this. Did you notice that? And, um, that the rescue owner was able to give us a little bit of feedback, which was nice because the rescue owner knew the previous family. So she knew a little bit more about his history. Okay. Ready? My main reason for um, inviting Dave and Jamie out here is because we live in Florida and we're literally starting in, I would say, a level three. Sometimes with the wind and stuff, we might even jump up to a level four. So having Dave and Jamie at our house to, to help us out through things so we didn't make major mistakes right off the bat. And he's also an older bird. We've never worked with an older bird, you know. He's older, it, he's a rescue, so, you know, background was, although we probably got more information than most people do with rescue birds, we still didn't really know. You know, every bird is, every bird is different, and that's something we've definitely learned. The training with him has been a lot different than what the training was with Ocean, and yeah, we, I mean, that's the whole point why we moved and we built a house, because we used to live in an unrecoverable area, and this, you know, although we have a lot of pasture, sometimes we get really strong winds, and one of the biggest things that we really wanted was for Dave and Jamie to come out, assess our location, give us their feedback as far as, and what are things that you guys see that we should look out for that we may not see. And the winds was really a big thing because, you know, you can have all flat land and have really strong winds and it kind of changes your levels. And so those are things that you learn within the pre-flight program is those different levels. And so we were able to recognize that, but we wanted some direction as to like, what are things that we can do? What are things that we should avoid? And how should we address with actually getting him ready for a free flight trip because ultimately our goal is we want to be able to go outside and have a cup of coffee and fly the birds if it's a great day you know obviously there's a lot more that goes into it you know before you take a bird outside but that's you know that's the lifestyle that we want to live take your word for it <laughs> oh. ocean nice you deserve two for that <laughs> a little jungle swing yeah so we asked Dave and Jamie to come out to help us with Diesel because we, A, we knew we wanted to free fly him. And we had already started with the foundations that we learned through bird tricks with Ocean. We had started those foundations with Diesel, which was really nice because he had already shown some signs of like target training. So we were able to kind of nitpick little things and tweak certain things to kind of fit our way of training as like how we learned with Dave and Jamie. But ultimately our goal is we wanted him, we want him to be outdoors and free fly. Um, we want him to be able to participate in the free flight trips that we go and we take ocean to. Like that's the one thing that we've always wanted as far with our birds and giving them that quality of life. Mm -hmm. I think an aha moment for Diesel was because when I would have my training sessions with him, he would display behavior that I was thinking was a little hormonal. And so I would talk to Dave about it and be like, this is what's going on. So what I do is I kind of try and refocus him with some target training and whatnot. And it wasn't until Dave got out here and I was like, that right there, that's what he's doing. And he's like, he's excited. Like that's not hormonal. It's he's ready to go. And so the one thing that I believe that Justin and I learned with Diesel is he is a workhorse. Is it going to fly? I want to fly again. <laughs> <laughs> he's very, very skilled. We've learned a lot of things about him as far as in like what he's able to do. It's more of just the confidence. And it's not just Diesel's confidence, it's our confidence. You know, we're still like we're still kind of new to it, especially with a a bird being an older and he's huge. You know, he's eleven hundred grams, which is usually on the higher end, but he's just a big bird. As far as ocean goes, 
the back of our property, we have like this brushy area that used to be for where they would store hay. And this whole time I've been like, we need to clean up all that crap. You know, there's all that junk. I don't want it on the property. I'm tired of the trees because that's where we used to live. But we actually learned with Ocean that that's her playground. So now it's not getting taken down. (laughs) Um, The one thing that Ocean, because we've been fighting with Ocean about that in the sense of like, gosh, she just, she loves the trees. How do we get her to not want to go to the trees but it's almost seemed like flying around in a circle is boring to her she likes some type of playground playground yeah like some type of challenge and so that's the one thing that was kind of like oh now we get it now we get why ocean's going to the trees in our little playground area it's really nice and it's a little perimeter and there's an open area and ocean would just like jump on a little branch that's like as thick as my finger and we're like she's landing really hard you know whenever we fly her outside but then we watch her land on a branch and she's just like cool as a cucumber landing on it and real she's demonstrated a lot of control so we learned a lot with ocean because we thought that she didn't have the skill we're like she's just small you know her muscles are not built up we just need to condition her and get her back but it's not that it's confidence with her as well and i think that's one of the biggest learning things that for both of them was that they're actually skilled they just don't have the confidence i think they like different things i'm almost 100 percent positive once we get diesel into the free flight he's going to be the one that's going to do a lot of the exploratories he's going to be the really really strong one ocean i think we pretty much learned she likes to bounce around use her brain to figure out different things versus just how do I turn in the wind? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Why do you just break it off? Look if she's going to step on it. I can't figure it out, guys. <laughs> she's got it. There you go. <laughs> she's trying to, can I reach around it? Can I step on it? Can I climb on it? <laughs> it is like is upper real. butt. Oh, that's a high value reward right there. Oh, that was so cute. Here you go. Call. Oh, yeah. Awesome! <laughs> you know, so it's going to be two totally different things, and that's what you got to watch out when you're doing multiple birds. It's, it's not the same. They aren't going to like the same thing. And you got to figure out what's going to be best for the birds for safety and every other reason. <laughs> He's like, I need out. the perfect spot to launch from. <laughs> Motivation change. Oh. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Our future in free flight um, is probably going to be a little bit different than a lot of people's. But we just bought a toy hauler where we're gonna set up the back um, with mounted cages for the, for the birds. We'll also be able to take the kids, so our next trip is gonna be in Idaho for the Marshalls event. We're also gonna to try to build like, flight cages, an aviary out in our backyard. That way they have sunshine and all that, and ultimately get the birds out in our backyard as much as possible. And travel with them. We can take them everywhere. So much easier, because then you don't have to worry about accommodations. Mm-hmm. Ocean. Oh yeah. Zig and a zag and a zoom, <laughs> just like zag. this. The Marshall GPS unit is amazing for both of our birds because now we can actually track their flights. We can see who does what and how fast they're going. I'm really, really interested to see Diesel's flights because that bird is gonna be a powerhouse. Also, I like the added insurance of the GPS unit does the batteries last forever stand by so it's not using it but it's mm-hmm. it's an awesome um thing to back up on yeah i played with the gps battery and i was able to get it to like last three days three full days being conservative with it but the batteries if you if you know how to work them they can last you a really really long time ocean i mean i can hold her and put her gps on and with diesel we waited to put the actual mount in the gps unit until dave and jamie got here just because we wanted to make sure that we got it right the first time and diesel was not happy about it the first time but we're day three and he is 
it's, Super it's simple. yeah it's a trained behavior now dave taught us he's like when you're giving you know associate a treat to putting on the gps and then that way you know he's looking at it like oh i get a reward and now he actually just turns around and lets you put it on still takes two people because he's a big boy <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Looks interesting. What was it like working with Dave and Jamie this time around? <laughs> Besides getting hit in the face with enter the tortilla, tortilla. <laughs> this right enter here is where bell. you put in the tortilla. The tortilla. <laughs> So having Dave and Jamie come to our house was really different because when we went through the free flight course, we really didn't have to utilize that in-home console. And when we had talked to Dave about diesel, you know, he recommended like, let's, you know, let's us come out there and, you know, see what we got. And so it was really, really nice because I genuinely felt like we have been able to get a lot of concerns taken care of. They've been able to see a lot of things that you don't really catch on video. Um, leading up to them coming, it was one of those where it's like, gosh, I want to send you videos, but all the videos that I'm getting are good. I need you to see, like, it's almost like you turn on the camera and Deuce is like, <laughs> he's like, I'm a good boy. And it's like, no, you little brat. <laughs> I mean, if you do something wrong, then you can just get slapped in the face with a tortilla. <laughs> How demanding is Jamie on this trip? Oh, tortillas. good lord. Make sure somebody knows how to cook or you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie hasn't been that bad, except about the guac. She really, really, really wanted tableside guac. I don't know what she thinks. This is not a Mexican restaurant. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't want to guac about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I felt on me! Fire ants! Oh no! <laughs>
signed a waiver.